You know what else? We're in the middle of nowhere! And you know what else else? I think the pizza's getting cold. SpongeBob is one of the most popular and in some ways most important animated shows in television history. It has been one of the best shows on television and one of the worst at times during its nearly two decade run, but one thing is indisputable. When SpongeBob is great, it's 12 to 24 minutes of animation that is borderline unrivaled in the medium, and it's been great a lot. But its writing staff, creative team, and unfortunately its creator have changed and in some cases moved on, leaving current SpongeBob in a very different place than this SpongeBob. So with all that variation in quality, somewhere in that sea of hundreds of episodes has to sit a gold standard. It turns out there's quite a few magnum opuses that have come out of Bikini Bottom. But today I want to talk about that one episode that I think best typifies the show at its best. Pizza delivery. This sequence here is one of my favorite moments in Spongebob's entire run. It's a simple moment, an exhausted Spongebob and Squidward walking through the seemingly endless expanse of land but it's how that is visually articulated that's so perfect. This moment was a product of a unique time for SpongeBob. Pizza Delivery is one of the few episodes, its only season, that was fully cell animated, meaning each frame was drawn by hand. And that cell animation created a very organic, sometimes imperfect look that was incredible. If you think this moment reminds you a lot of something like this, you aren't alone. Whereas future seasons will shift further and further towards digital animation, Pizza Delivery's cell animation gives the episode this amazing energy where every moment feels unique. And that's because every single frame has to be different. It creates this chaotic visual momentum. The same energy you see in Ed Ed and Eddie or Ren and Stimpy. If I slow a moment like this down, it's kind of incredible to see just how much detail is paid to every single bat of your eye. Sure, the cell animation created a darker tint and it was substantially more expensive than digital animation, but Pizza Delivery is an episode where Spongebob's energy, the visual gags, feel kinetic, feel raw, and it's kind of beautiful to watch. But the second thing that makes for a perfect episode of Spongebob has everything to do with these two. And you know what else else? I think the pizza's getting cold. A good portion of the very best Spongebob episodes, things like Graveyard Shift, The Magic Conch, Swid's Day Off, Idiot Box, all have one thing in common. They utilize the show's two most interesting characters to their advantage. It's Spongebob versus Squidward, or with Squidward. It's Sponge Squid. Pizza Delivery epitomizes Sponge Squid and everything great about their relationship. Totally ideologically opposed, totally true to their characters, Spongebob is too naive to understand that Squidward finds them obnoxious, but here, they're put in a unique situation. Spongebob wants to deliver the pizza to the customer at all costs, and common societal logic would dictate that Spongebob is right. That's his job. Squidward, on the other hand, would rather eat it, or... Who cares about the customer? I do! Well, I don't! Oh, Squidward! Just go home. But this episode does one better. It finds comedy in making us question which one of these two is actually smarter. Squidward forces Spongebob to drive. He objects, Squidward insists, and well... Spongebob follows the pioneers, puts his ear to the ground, and... Truck! 16 wheels! Oh wait, he was right, here comes a truck. And that pioneer gag pays off in a big way later in the episode when Spongebob finds a rock and says he can drive it to freedom just like the pioneers, and he actually does. Drive? Rocks? As the two are lost, struggling to find home or their delivery destination, Squidward's voice of reason act slowly flies out the window, and it's when the show plants these two together and forces its two funniest characters onto level ground that I think it's at its very best, which is what we see in Pizza Delivery. And that kind of leads into the third core element of a perfect Spongebob episode. It's this. Any show that runs as long as Spongebob has is going to hit walls with its writing and animation. C.H. Greenblatt came in and introduced the gross-up that helped revolutionize how we saw the show's characters. The film and Steven Hillenburg's return helped resurrect the writing, but the reality is that the show was at its best when it was hard to predict. When the gags and humor were novel, so well written that it prevented its characters from becoming flanderized. 
A term referring to a character who is enveloped by and slowly transitioned into being exclusively one piece of their personality all the time. I have a whole video about it here. Pizza delivery nails that. Sure, Spongebob is naive, emotional, and high energy, but this iconic hitchhiking gag follows a previous moment of Spongebob actually showing some intellect. And yes, the Krusty Krab Pizza song, particularly this moment, is incredibly funny, but it's funny because Squidward is begrudgingly letting it happen. Even this gag here with the boat. It's expected that Spongebob is going to screw this up. We know he can't drive, but instead of taking the easy route with the writing and having him excitedly jump at the opportunity to drive, hop into the boat and peel off into absolute mayhem, he actually protests driving at all, tells Squidward no. I can't, I'm still in boating school. Come on, Spongebob, it's just around the corner. It's Squidward that pressures him into and creates this moment. In pizza delivery, Spongebob isn't brainless. He's just committed to his job to a hilarious degree, to the point that he'd rather starve than fail. Squidward, in pizza delivery, is angry and a little mean, but he's also empathetic. He isn't a total bully. So every moment of humor kind of feels grounded. You get it. It doesn't need to shove the humor down your throat. And it's the only reason the final element of a perfect Spongebob episode works. How am I supposed to eat this pizza without my drink? Uh, Didn't you ever uh, once think of the customer? You call yourself a delivery boy? Well, I ain't buying! Spongebob's an interesting show in that it's almost entirely humor-based. There's no nuanced narrative, there's no hero or villain most of the time, it isn't about teaching life lessons, and it isn't serialized. It, unlike things like the aforementioned Ed, Ed and Eddie, also doesn't follow a formula episode to episode. So it can be hard to write a really good resolution to that kind of very loose structure. Pizza Delivery has one of the best endings of any episode of Spongebob, period. It's hilarious, but it's also kind of heartwarming. After traveling all that way, fighting a sandstorm, riding a rock, they arrive at the house for delivery, but the guy doesn't want the pizza because he didn't get his drink. His response is brutal, totally unexpected, a complete subversion of the catharsis expected by the viewer, and he ends up slamming the door in Spongebob's face. Squidward reacts like we should. Instead of doubling down on his anger and frustration, he feels bad for Spongebob. He goes back and, well, this one's on the he didn't tell Spongebob a lie that he changed his mind and ate the pizza just to make him feel better, and they drive back to work, which hilariously is just a mere few feet away. It's a funny, smile-inducing ending that gives Squidward a moment to empathize with Spongebob and adds a nuance to his personality. He isn't a one-note character, and it also makes sure to end with Squidward completely defeated, as is his natural existing state. It's great writing. Sticking the landing on this episode makes a great episode a perfect one. And it's something all the best episodes have in common. Unexpected, but importantly, perfect endings. There are a dozen or more episodes that you could call perfect throughout the show's run, but I think it's fair to say that Pizza Delivery is one of the more iconic episodes of animation, period. It combines its product of the time cell animation with the show's best characters, some of its best writing, and one of its more unique endings, and creates something that still makes its way into memes and perforates throughout popular culture all these years later. Steven Hillenburg's early work on the show, that original team, created something truly and genuinely special. Something that Nick has been chasing across their network ever since. But it takes more than a meme to create something iconic. It's a perfect storm. It's the context that surrounds the moment that makes it stick. It's the perfect episode. And this, well, there's a very good reason we remember this. Well guys, that is it for today's episode of Nerdstalgic. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button down below. If you haven't done so, also press subscribe. That way you won't miss anything I put out in the future. Also, next subscribe button, little bell. All that bell does is actually make sure you're notified when I upload instead of, you know, not being notified. So hit subscribe and a little bell next to it. I do, by the way, have another video on SpongeBob on this channel. It's more about his design changes throughout the years. It goes into a bit more depth about some of the things I talked about here, so you can check that out. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an amazing website builder, a tool that I'm actually currently in the process of using for something for you guys. From websites to online stores, marketing tools, analytics, Squarespace is basically an all-in-one platform designed to make sure 
your online presence or your business gets off the ground and runs smoothly. It is things like simultaneous posting, which means that you can authenticate your social media profiles and post across everything, including your website, all at once. It is audio blocks to support podcasting, which I have an announcement about soon. You can give multiple people and contributors selective access to your site's website manager, meaning that if you want some help running your site, if you want to do something even bigger and you need a team, you can do that as well. This is an amazing website builder, something that I would not endorse if I wasn't using it. I am currently right now building something special for you guys on Squarespace. You'll see that soon. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to actually launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash nerdstalgic to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And on your screen right now are two other episodes of Nerdstalgic. You can click on either of these to see something I've done recently. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next video.